All right, this is a voiceover recording for uh, tutorial number 29. And in this video, we're going to be talking about low poly, um, well, low poly modeling. Um, what you can see right here in front of you is, um, well, it's uh, a time lapse I did of a low poly model I was making. Um, it's nothing spectacular, it's just something really simple. Um, a floating island and uh, the composition doesn't end up great but you know it, it gets across the major concepts that I wanted to show you and uh, a lot of what you might notice in this is that I um, do some I guess I make primitive objects and then I um, after I make a primitive object I will uh, do a tiny bit of modeling and uh, then I will add a displacer um, a displace deformer and a uh, low poly or polygon reduction deformer and uh, using both of those or um, sometimes just the polygon reduction deformer or, or sometimes it just comes out with very low polygon resolution I stick with that but um, I usually get some uh, pretty good looking stuff if I was going to do something like you know an animal or something more organic I won't use the displacer um, or maybe I will just keep it really subtle but um, if I'm doing something like what you see right now, the background, um, I will use the displacer and the uh, low poly or the polygon reduction tool, and that'll give me this really, uh, really good look, as you can see right there. Um, let's see. Um, so basically, that's how I uh, do most of my low poly modeling. Um, I start with a low poly count. I don't use fong tags ever, at all, um, and uh, yeah, um, I make sure that the lighting is a little harsh, um, like right here you have global illumination, or I guess actually it's indirect lighting um, that I use, uh, indirect illuminance, I think, but um, what I uh, what I do here is I take one light from the right and it creates a lot of shadows on the left and that looks just great I think um, it really defines the points and uh, um, yeah I mean it looks good um, I usually use really simple textures as well just uh, simple colors um, sometimes I'll go a little bit more complex and advanced but um, lower polygon models usually, in my experience, look better with a simpler color, um, simple shaders and everything. Um, yeah. So, what I'm doing here is just, you know, making objects. I like to use, um, noise for these things. I like to, uh, add, um, these, uh, I like to add noise to the color and just kind of take the color I was originally going to use and just offset it a little bit just to give it some variation so it's not just one color um, and then right here I'm using metaballs um, which are a great tool for low poly creation if you use them right and I didn't do so well in this but um, it turned out decent you could tell it looked like a bush kind of so I mean that worked out um, yeah so let's go ahead and let this play through a little bit more um, once I finish modeling it, I uh, go ahead and I freeze the transforms, and then I uh, rotate it and everything, uh, put the axis at the center of all the polygons, which is a uh, handy tool you can find in, uh, let's see, I think it's one of the drop downs in the top menu, I can't remember, but if you watch my other tutorials, it's in one of those. <laughs> um, and then again, I'm adding, you know, displacers. Um, displacement and then uh, I don't add in this case any low polygon or polygon reduction uh, deformers because it already has been or it already has a low set of polygons um, now what I'm doing is modeling a rock um, I'm using pi deform which is a great tool you can find over at c40tools.net and I'm, um, it just makes these um, faster to apply these uh, um, Oh, what are they deformers and then I add a connect object 
and use manual Fong settings so I can um, displace all the polygons without actually having um, the edges come off the cube, which was very important to me. Um, and then it takes a little while, and I end up deleting some of the deformers I added, I think, but um, what I get out of it is a really good uh, looking low poly rock. And uh, you'll see here soon in a bit. The connect object is really helpful though. I, uh, I've never used it before this scene file for low poly scenes. Actually, I've never used it before, but um, it's really helpful when you wanna connect objects that uh, aren't necessarily fully connected. So anyways, I make this rocked and rock and then I duplicate it and offset it and scale and rotate. And it's a really fast way to, you know, cheat it and make it look like it's just one rock. And then I go back to the camera view and see if everything's looking good. I start to rotate it just to make sure everything looks all right. Later, you'll notice I actually add some espresso so that the time itself will offset the rotation of the uh, island. That's why everything is a child of the island. So if I move the island, it will rotate the entire scene. So now I'm adding layers to everything, just keeping organization up, creating, I believe, a rock texture. Yeah. And a bump map. Um, I use those for some things. Uh, sometimes I'll add it to, say, a rock um, or dirt. Um, I'll even add it to foliage sometimes. I didn't in this case, but um, it depends on what you're going for, what your desired effect is, but or desired effect is. But um, it worked out with the rocks this time around, so I kept it. And then I turned off OpenGL because my MacBook, um, well, OpenGL does not play well with my MacBook. Um, sadly. Um, and then I just add the rocks into formations that, that you know, kind of make sense. Um, at least they did to me. And then, uh, you know, the time range mapping and uh, offset of the island. Then I start to uh, add some platonics, which are really fun if you use them right, with uh, the polygon reduction tools. Um, they didn't turn out as well this time around. I wasn't very happy with them. In the final product but um they worked and they made sense um the floating island didn't look that great in the end but it did prove a point and it made sense so at least that part was conquered um but what i'm using here is a, a set of platonics and a cloner and i'm just making um i guess rocks and dirt fall off of the bottom um i wish i had gone through and added or added some uh, like roots and um, some rocks further down, but I didn't in this case, so, you know, it's too late now, but it would have looked better, I think. Um, I use the cloner right now and some, uh, MoGraph to offset all of the rocks. Um, you could place all of these manually, and you'll, they'll probably look better if you place them all manually, if you're smart about it, but I, uh, you know, I wasn't very, um, interested in taking all of that time to do it. I just, I just wanted to get it done quickly. This was kind of a sketch, just uh, brainstorming. And I was having some trouble with these rocks, and you might notice it, but um, they're all shooting out on one axis more than they should, and it took me a while to figure that out. So, I do get to it, though. Um, I think I use... Oh, actually, you know what? I forget I even said that. I'll talk about what I, I was going to say that I add more deformers to each of these, but that's not true. I actually do later on a different object, but I do, um, I do zoom out eventually and look at this and realize, um, they're falling off the very tip and it just didn't look right. So I, uh, changed it and made it fall off from the, uh, entire, um, object, the entire island. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I'm looking at it right there, and I'm like, you know, that doesn't work, so then I do that, so. It's fun to make this stuff fast. Low poly, low poly scenes look good if you do them right, but, you know, if you don't do them right, they don't look good, and uh, sometimes there's a whole lot of luck involved, but, you know.
make enough of them and they start to get a little easier to make and they make more sense and you get your style defined. So that's a lot of fun. And I'm using the shader effector with a gradient and adding turbulence to the gradient to offset all of those so that they kind of fall off in this tapered pattern. I just wanted them to fall more towards the center. And I thought about offsetting the island to the left, but I decided in the end to keep it centered. Um, one thing I didn't do was I didn't render this out as an official final image. I just rendered out a test image in the end. Um, what I would have done is, um, right now it's widescreen. I would have uh, flipped it from landscape to portrait and made it a kind of a print style and uh, made it a very um, tall image, but not a very wide image because um, the composition in the end actually does look good for that but uh, it didn't work out with the uh, image that um, you might have already seen. I'm not sure I've actually, I, yeah, I've showed you guys, I guess. But, um, yeah, so what you have right here is just me adding more deformers. I think I add two displacers, two displacement deformers. I can't actually tell right now because I'm watching this, but it's a super low resolution playback. So it's, uh, I can't read it. <laughs> Anyways, what I'm doing here is adding apples to the tree. Um, probably my worst decision of the entire scene. Um, but you know, it, it made sense when I thought about it, but when I looked at it, it just didn't look good. So anyways, you know, sometimes it happens. Um, I moved the tree. Uh, so it's not, you know, centered, and I think that looks better. Now I start to add clouds. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to model the clouds. And um, again, making sure that there is not a single thong tag in the entire scene, because I don't want the, uh, I want the polygons to, like, hit the light um, and not have it roll off onto the next polygon. Oh, and I had to make sure, you know, Pandora was still playing. Um... So now I have two Displace Deformers and a Polygon Reduction Deformer. And what I'm doing here is starting to generate clouds. Um, I wish I'd stuck with that cloud shape right there, um, but I didn't in the end, which was just a mistake of mine. I changed it, but in the end it looks decent. Um, and I add these cloud shapes, and I don't actually render out the clouds with these. I actually use pyro clusters and a cloud generator I've built. So you'll see that in a few. But um, it definitely starts to work out well, so eventually. I have to do a lot of tweaking. Um, like with most scene files, you just got to tweak it. Um, and that's what I'm doing right here. I probably spent 15 or so minutes just on the clouds um, out of the entire hour and a half I spent on the entire scene. Maybe 20 or 30 minutes on the clouds. It was more than I wanted to, but they just weren't working for me, so... I eventually got it all figured out, and when I figured it all out, I then uh, changed it, or I converted all of the geometry to, uh, well, to geometry, and made it one single object, and then I added it to my uh, cloud generator, and that worked out well, so you'll see in a few. So, um, low polygon scenes... I guess the biggest thing to think about is uh, keep it or is to keep the polygons low. Um, if you've ever like one thing I think about a lot is uh, gesture drawing, or just um, referring referring things to actual f like traditional art, because I've been studying a lot of that lately, and uh, I guess low polygon scenes are like gesture drawings where they don't really go into s like extreme detail of what's in the scene, but they uh, kind of represent the basic idea, and uh, they're very stylized um, as well. So as you can see, I've got my clouds finished, and uh, they don't look great, but you know, it works. I'm going through and deleting some instances of the uh, debris that fell down, and I deleted one of the polygon objects at the bottom on accident, and uh, that would make sure the instances didn't actually get to delete. So. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm uh, grabbing all of the uh, polygons and adding them to their own layer and locking the layer. 
and then deleting as much as I can. And then I unlock it and move it and keep on deleting because there was a huge cluster at the bottom and that wouldn't have looked good. Um, I'm saving the file as well. Or actually, no, I'm importing the cloud generator and deleting everything but the actual cloud generator itself. Um, and then I'm setting up the scene and the clouds and I do a few test renders and those will go pretty fast. Um, because, uh, I mean, my computer doesn't render this fast. I wish it rendered that fast. This is uh, 500 times playback speed. So what you see right here is uh, far faster than what I actually got to watch. Um, the test image in the end took, I think, half an hour to render. Maybe, maybe more, um, which you'll watch in the end while we finish talking, but... Um, what I'm doing is I'm adding clouds with these py uh, pyro clusters and, uh, you know, if you're doing a low poly scene, you can add other things in that aren't low poly if you do it right and it can look fine. Um, it will make it a, um, well, I guess it won't be a, you know, a vanilla low poly scene, which kind of means like, um, it, all it would be is low poly, but, um, adding pyro clusters in just kind of gives it a little bit of contrast, changes it up a bit. Um, I think if you do it right, it looks interesting, but, you know, wasn't too perfect on it. I think it's rendering as well. No. Well, anyways, um, what I'm doing now is uh, making sure I have the clouds all set up right. I'm uh, placing the camera, doing another test render, and I didn't actually go through with the test render. I changed some render settings. I stopped my render, which I will show you. Um, a little bit in here, uh, then I add more clouds, and then uh, it starts to render. And uh, that other scene, which some of you have seen, is a um, low poly forest I made. Um, I got my wisdom teeth out earlier in the week, and I've had a lot of bed rest, and uh, I got bored and decided to make a quick low poly scene, and uh, I made a low poly forest. And um, the nice thing about these is they are actually rather easy to do once you get enough of them done. Um, you start to get more comfortable with them and you aren't too worried about what you're making and uh, it, it works out really well. So um, what I made was a simple uh, polygon object and used a displace deformer with a gradient and some turbulence right there, as you can see, to uh, raise up the center. And then I cloned some cylinders onto it and added some twist deformers to the cylinders. I'm saving it to the desktop right now. Um, and then I added a background, kind of like what you see right here, but a lot more polygons. Um, and uh, then I added a single light from the side kind of to represent the moon. Um, I used the sky object for that and I added fog as well. Um, and it is just a work in progress image that you saw. Um, I have a lot more going into that. I've already put 20 minutes of extra work into it, but, um, simple, same concepts, uh, some harsher lighting that represents, you know, the multiple polygon, um, or I guess the lower polygon style. Um, it shows specular on one side and then it rolls off, but not like really smooth roll off, um, which is what it, uh, what you see right here. Um, and then you have the shadows, and it's just got a very harsh image. So anyways, uh, that is uh, the video. So thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, uh, my name is Sam Welker uh, from thinkparticle.com. And uh, if you guys want to find me on Twitter, I'm Sam Welker TV on Twitter. And I have a Think Particle Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash thinkparticle. If you go like that, you'll get to be the first to know when my new tutorials come out. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And if you guys have any questions, drop a comment below, and I'll, uh, I'll see you guys later.